All right. If we think of populism in an ideational way, uh, it's not only possible to think of populism on the supply side, but we can equally uh, think of, of this to see and to study uh, a populist demand. In other words, populism can be something that we observe amongst individuals. For about a decade now, populist attitudes are probably the most common way of conceptualizing this, uh, this populist demand. Up until today, an important part of the populism scholarship examines these populist attitudes, explores their measurement, and how they in turn affect politics, and perhaps most notably, vote choice and political support. And it's with that in mind uh, that I want to explore this in a little bit more detail throughout this recording. For the purpose, I'm joined today by Andre Zaslove, with whom I have a conversation uh, about an article he published in 2014, together with Agnes Ackerman and Cass Mude. The article, uh, published in Comparative Political Studies, is already one of the more seminal studies when we talk about uh, populist attitudes. And only six years after the publication has quickly become one of the more cited studies on, on populist attitudes as well. At the same time, and perhaps more substantively, uh, some of the article's main takeaways have uh, since been widely confirmed and used as a starting point for a wide variety of research agendas, including my own. Um, I think few scholars would disagree with me when it, when it comes to the actual importance and the value of this article. So let us have a, a quick talk or a quick chat about the article. First of all, Andre, can you briefly highlight what you guys set out to do in the article and what was kind of the main question that guided your interest? Yeah, so, so as, as you said, um, um, it's, um, it was an article that attempted to measure populist attitudes. Um, and um, I mean, up to that point, so the, the article was published in 2014. So I think we started um, working on the article somewhere around 2013. So up to that point, um, there were some nice attempts um, to measure, to measure, um, to measure degrees of populism in individuals. Um, but it, yeah, it wasn't terribly successful um, because it's really hard, right? Um, so um, yeah, we, we kind of um, were, it was a little, we were busy with collecting some new data and, um, and, and it was a little bit um, coincidental in some sense. We were sort of like, um, you know what? Um, we were always thinking about populism in terms of the attaching ideology, but we're, we're never really measuring the core of populism. So you, you said you started with the ideational approach. So we sort of looked around um, to see what was out there. And obviously there was this, um, probably the most important unpublished um, um, piece of work by, by Koss and Cristobal and, no, sorry, Cristobal, Koss and, and, and Kirk and Scott Ridding, I think. He, he, was, a, he, was, a, he was a student of, 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 um, of Kirk's. And this was a really nice study and it was very creative. And what they did is they basically, um, they basically took some of the stealth attitudes and they took some different things and they had some really nice ideas and they, they started to test this idea about, about measuring populism. So this was a really important starting point. So what we did with um, Aknes and myself and Kass is we took that as a starting point and then we built on that. Um, and um, yeah, we tried to measure populist attitudes in, in individuals so <laughs> up to that point. I mean, yeah, it was a few people that done it. Um, 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 Bram Sprout in, in, in Belgium did it and also and also um, and also Ben Stanley in, in I think that was his study was also before then um, in he did it as well but it's tricky right because I mean it's it's a, it's a, it's it's tricky to to get this right um, so anyway we 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 in, in two we took in 2013 we 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 tried to do this and and what we what we yeah we put out in a survey in the field and and it worked <laughs> I right, mean so yeah. You said that you 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 basically set out to to measure populist attitudes. Yeah. Right? So can yeah. you tell us in a bit, perhaps more of a theoretical or substantive way, what populist attitudes are, or what your kind of underlying yeah. idea was? What was it actually that you wanted to measure? 
Yeah, yeah. So what we so what we wanted to measure was um, uh, was um, the extent to which an individual was more or less populist is what we wanted to measure. Um, so you you probably we, we you started out with the ideational approach and the ideational approach has um, has depending on how you add it up has several different um, constituent parts to it. So it has um, the idea that the people are sovereign, it's anti-elite, it has this um, Manichaean notion, and it has this idea of the general will. And this idea is when you bring all these together, that you get a, a latent construct of, of populism. So the idea here is you just can't go out and ask someone, you know, how populist are you? You have to create this, this latent construct. Um, so we, we set out to try to figure out how we could, um, we could measure this, um, this latent construct of, of populism. So that was one important point. But the second point, which I sort of alluded to already, is that, um, is that up to that point, um, whenever people tried to um, determine how populist someone was, um, it was mostly done by proxies. So it wasn't really done directly. So it was either done by um, looking at what we call the attaching ideology. So saying, you know, how anti-immigrant are you or something like that, how anti, how, how, how much do you oppose the European Union? Or, um, and what was done is, 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 is associating things like um, trust and efficacy with, with the equivalent to, to measuring populism. So we, we tried to directly measure this ideational approach. And so we tried to create some questions where we could, we could bring them all together and say, okay, this is the latent concept of, of, um, of, of populism. Um, so in that paper, what we really tried to do is try to see if this would work um, in the sense, could we, measure, um, could we measure populist attitudes in individuals is what we tried to do. Yeah. And what, uh, what survey did you use specifically for that? What country did you study? In so we did it in the Netherlands. Um, we, we had a survey company in the Netherlands. Um, and um, yeah, we used a company in the Netherlands and it was a fairly, it was a fairly um, small sample. I think it was something like 600, 700 people. Um, it was, was interesting and this has also changed. This, I mean, this was sort of on the cusp when people were starting to use internet surveys. And this was really nice because now we can be so creative and really, you know, until 10 years ago, we were so stuck with using the standard scales and, and, and using standard surveys. So we, yeah, so we went out, we, we, we used a small survey company. We didn't have terribly a lot of money and, and we, 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 we used a small survey company. We did it in the Netherlands. Um, you know, I, I could give you a fancy explanation of why we did it in the Netherlands, um, but really is because we, we, we didn't have much money and we were in the Netherlands and we had a survey company. So, you know, uh, as, my, as my colleague Christopher, Christopher, um, Christoph Jakob says, it's about case justification. Um, and so then we justify it afterwards and afterwards, you know, the Netherlands is a good case. I mean, the nice thing about the Netherlands is that what we could do in that article is we could we could um, look at left and right populism, right? So if we would have started in another country, um, it would have might have been more difficult to to demonstrate the 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 extent to which the extent to which um, the survey worked because I mean, this is the other thing. So by trying to directly measure populism, we, we're trying to get beyond the left and the right. So we're trying to measure what unifies um, different populace, um, well, demand in this case, um, people, individuals that vote for, vote for populist, um, um, vote for populist parties. And in, uh, in this uh, regard, you, you also took into account uh, two other batteries of questions yeah. that also relate uh, very yeah. closely to this. So pluralism yeah. and elitism, could you tell us a little bit why you took uh, those specific batteries of questions into account and how they're relevant for us to understand uh, the notion of populist attitudes. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. So, okay, so I mean, so this, this paper was really an attempt to, to see if this scale would work. Um, and so, so what, we, what we did is, um, is we wanted to see if, we wanted to see if the, 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 the populist items would um, load on a single scale. So if we could, we could just determine that they were, this was an entity which we called populism. 
But in order to do that, we, we wanted to validate it by, 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 by um, also including other dimensions, which are usually associated with, um, well, I'll say the opposite of populism. Mm -hmm. but, in, but I actually prefer the, the term not populism in the sense because I don't think populism has, um, it's not, doesn't have poles. I mean, so we can see that in this case, what we did is we also tried to, we took questions that looked at pluralism and, and elitism. So the idea was to, to, to try to, um, I mean, to see if this scale would, would work in the sense of um, would it tap into populist attitudes, but at the same time, we wanted to differentiate the populist attitudes from other other known dimensions which why are, is that important why sorry. why was that important for you to to look into that as well well it was it was it was it was um it was important in a, in a sense to um to to confirm the validity of the popular scale by by ex by by confirming the fact that that if you if you if you're looking for different dimensions that that we were we're finding something that's distinct from other dimensions that are that are that are that are that are close to populism or com or or in some sense um, completely opposed to populism. So what I'm saying here is close. I mean, in some sense, you could say that, for example, um, um, anti -elit or elitism is has some affinities with populism. Um, but it, but it, it, but there's also some things that differentiate it from populism. So it was important for us, in 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 a sense, to to assure that we were clearly distinguishing populism from other um, sorts of um, attitudes that that we that, that 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 we were that are that are associated with the whole discussion. So we did two things. I mean, we did that, and then we also tried to. Then we also. Um, we also looked at at vote choice as well. So we were, tr were trying to think, you know, I mean, you you could, I mean, because if you're doing what we did, I mean, and, and you know this, Stephen, and, and and you've done um, further research on this. I mean, you know, I mean, th there's one thing finding um, that something is coherent in a certain in a dimension, but it's another thing. Um, trying to be sure that you're measuring what you think you're measuring, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we, 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 could, we could find this dimension, which we call populism, but I mean, it, it, it could be measuring something completely different, right? I mean, but we're so, we, were, we, we tested it by trying to contest it in relation to pluralism and, 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 and elitism, but also then subsequently in terms of, of, in terms of vote choice or association with, with mm -hmm. populist parties. All right, so let's get into those two. Uh, let's start with the more descriptive uh, uh, kind of uh, findings. So could you tell us a, a little bit, give us a little overview of what exactly you found in terms of the presence of populist attitudes as well as pluralism and elitism? Were your expectations, quote unquote, confirmed? Did you find what you were expecting? So we, we found what we were expecting more or less. Um, so we had, I think in the, I think I'd have to look back. I think at the beginning we had, um, we had eight populist questions, I think. Um, and, um, and we had three pluralist questions and three or four elitist questions. I'd have to look back. And, and we did basically find what we were looking for or what we expected in the sense that we, we saw that um, that the questions that were supposed to tap into the core dimensions of populism, so the anti-elitism, the people centrism, um, and these kinds of things, and the and the general will, that these loaded on a single dimension. So that was one very important thing. So we 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 saw that they loaded on a single dimension. We saw that 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 the other dimensions also strongly loaded. So we our pluralist question strongly loaded on a pluralist dimension, and our and our um, elitist question strongly um, loaded on on the elitist dimension. So we were able to distinguish three distinct distinct um, um, latent constructs or three different three different dimensions. Um, so that was one important finding. And then the second important finding. Is that um, is that there was a high association with um, with voting for or 
with vote well we didn't we all we did is correlations and, and it was just comparing means in, in that case and subsequently we've done more work on this and you've done more work on this doing more sophisticated things but there we were just looking at you know individuals who um score higher on the populist attitudes there's a stronger association with um with with supporting a populist party. So this in some sense was, you know, what we were, were hoping for, that this was measuring um, something in individuals and there was also a relationship to, 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 the, to the populist parties, yeah. All right, so what does that tell us more substantively? Like what should we take away from, from those empirical observations? Uh, yeah, so I mean, in some point? sense, I mean, um, what we did in that article was, was extremely simple. I mean, um, and sometimes I, I kind of laugh because this is, you know, the, 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 the like you said, this, I mean, the, the, extra, the, ex, the influence this article has had. But I mean, we did statistical methods that, you know, you could do as a second year student could do, right? I mean, we did simple, simple, you know, um, simple statistics and we were looking at means in these kinds of things and just comparing it. So the innovative thing was, was the survey development. And subsequently, um, we've done more work here. Um, and I mean, the, the most important thing that we take away from this is that, um, is that, um, that you can measure um, and this is really important. You can measure degrees of populism in individuals. And I really underline that word degree. And I think this is really important because this is something that, that this whole line of research, I mean ours, but other research and uh, along this line, up to that point, it was more or less people were thinking in sort of Sartorian dichotomous terms. And I think now we, we really think about that someone is more or less populist or a party is more or less populist. And you're gonna interview Mao, it's Myers, and we've taken this over in, also in our expert survey. So, we, we, so one important finding is that p individuals in this case can be more or less populist. Um, the second important finding is that, um, is that we find um, that this is really populist attitudes is the most consistent unifier um, for de um, for vote choice, and so what I mean here, it's the most consistent factor that explains why individuals vote for populist parties. And here I mean um, um, left and right wing populist parties. So you yourself and Stein have the really nice article where you did this, and we did it also in another paper, um, where you look at left and right wing populist parties, and and you can see that that they're that they're they're actually extremely different parties, right? They're, 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 I mean, you know, some there's, yeah, sometimes it depends which data set you get and which point in time. There, there's other variables that sometimes, such as trust or gender, these kinds of things that sort of overlap. But consistently, the most, the only thing that really unifies these populist parties is the degree to which they're, they're populist. They have a populist attitude. So this people-centeredness and this anti-elitism is, is the most important thing that unifies these parties. And then I would say the third most important, so this is subsequent findings, is that um, this, um, this um, is different than the way individuals used to um, measure populism. Um, and here I mean um, um, the, the, the core of populism. So before I, so I said that before we did this added the attitude stuff, people tried to either measure it with the attaching ideology or they would try to measure the core ideology by looking at, for example, political trust and efficacy. Um, and, and the populist attitudes, um, there's, there's some similarities there, but they're tapping into something different. And we, we just have a new a publication last year where we look specifically at this. And so what we show there is that, um, that populist attitudes are different than, than trust and efficacy. Now, people that vote for populist parties might have low trust or they might have low efficacy, that's for sure. Um, but populist attitudes remains the most robust um, explanation that, that, that cuts across all the different types of populist parties. And I think this is really important. And, 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 and I think this is really important because it, 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 um, it helps us better understand um, why individuals vote for populist parties. And it helps us better understand the continued success of populist parties. And I think what it does is it allows us to get beyond, beyond 
some of the assumptions that 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 are behind this and you've done nice work on 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 political political sophistication and knowledge and these kinds of these kinds of things and I mention this stuff because usually we, we think of individuals that vote for populist parties as only people who are, are voting um, against something. And we assume that they're, they're, they're stupid or they're, they're low trusting and all these kinds of things. And they are low trusting in these kinds of things. But I think if it, it, it's more complex. And I think if we, we look at the populist attitudes, they're also voting for something. And, and they're, 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 they're choosing these parties because they have a people-centered notion of of political representation, and 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 I think what's what's going on is they have they have a they have an idea of what political representation should be, right? And so I mean, and I'm, I'm broad. I'm painting a broad picture, and it's more mm -hmm. complex. And I'm not saying everybody's like this. And, and there is obviously a point. The trust and these kinds of things play an important role. But I think this helps us get a more nuanced idea of what um, of what um, what populist why individuals choose populist parties. Yeah, and I think that's a that's a very nice uh, kind of conclusion to to wrap up the conversation. Thank you very much, Andre, for the insights in uh, in your article.